Heat evolved at constant pressure. So if the chemical reaction is open to the atmosphere, that means the pressure is going to be constant. The volume may change. And so now we can have energy evolving as both heat and as work. Many times, though, we're only interested in the heat part. We don't care about the work because it's, it's not exactly useful work. So how do we get around that? Because doing stuff in uh, constant volume can be a bit tedious. Well, here's another word, enthalpy. So enthalpy has the symbol capital H. The enthalpy is the sum of the internal energy and the product of the pressure and the volume. So enthalpy equals internal energy plus pressure times volume. Enthalpy is a state function. The internal energy is a state function. The pressure is a state function. Volume is a state function. Do you remember what a state function is? How you get from one point to another doesn't matter. Only the difference matters, it's like a change in elevation. It doesn't matter what path you take up the mountain, your change in elevation is the same. So when pressure changes, it doesn't matter how you changed the pressure, if you went high and then came back down, or if you just went up slowly, you went up quickly, it doesn't matter. The difference in pressure is always the same. That's what a state function is. So as with many things pertaining to energy, we don't look at the actual enthalpy, we look at enthalpy change. So the enthalpy change is the heat evolved in a reaction at constant pressure. So the change in enthalpy equals the change in internal energy plus the pressure, which is constant, times its change in volume. So we previously said that the change in energy was heat plus work. Here we're going to call this Q sub P because the pressure is constant. So Q sub P plus W plus P times change in volume. You're like, where are we going with this? Well, what is P delta V? That's related to work, right? Work is W equals negative P delta V. So this P delta V is the same as negative W. So now we've got Q at constant pressure plus W minus W. The W's magically go away. And so the change in enthalpy is equal to the heat exchange at constant pressure. So most of you are not going to care how we got there. This is the part you need to remember. What part? The delta H equals QP. I know, it's a bit confusing. So delta E was equal to QV. The change in internal energy equals the heat exchanged at constant volume. The change in enthalpy equals the heat exchanged at constant pressure. The difference is subtle but significant. Um, it also doesn't matter that much at this level of chemistry, but we don't want to lie to you more than we really have to lie to you. I am lying to you about stuff. It's for your own good. So delta H and delta E are similar in concept. They are often similar in the value, the number as well. But delta E measures all the energy, heat and work exchanged with the surroundings. And delta H measures only heat exchanged under constant pressure. Um, when does this become important? If we have reactions that either produce or use large quantities of gas and thus have a, a large volume change. That's when the difference is important. Most of the time, it doesn't matter that much. So delta H and delta E follow the same sign conventions. Um, if these are positive, heat is being absorbed, like money coming into my wallet is a positive experience for me. If delta H or delta E are negative, then heat is being released, it's going out. 
So coming in, heat coming in is endothermic. It's going in. Exothermic, we've got the energy leaving. So endothermic and exothermic. Any questions? So we talked about those um, hand warmers. The, they have iron filings, they oxidize. Um, that's an exothermic reaction. It releases heat. Your hands get warm because the heat is released. You can also buy chemical cold packs, so an instant ice pack. These have ammonium nitrate in them, and as it dissolves in water, it's an endothermic reaction. It absorbs energy, and it feels cold. Why does it feel cold? Well, you stick it on your wrist, maybe because you, you sprained your wrist or something. This endothermic reaction is bringing heat in from the surroundings. If your arm is touching it, it's going to take heat from your skin, and it's going to get colder. Any questions? It's really kind of trippy when you think about it. Because I mean, how does something just get cold all by itself? Right? We don't see that very often. But there are reactions that occur, and they'll just suck energy in from outside. Does that mean that heat energy is disappearing, being destroyed? No, law of conservation of energy. You can't destroy energy. Where is it going? It's being stored as chemical energy in the products of the reaction. OK, let's talk about exothermic and endothermic. Um, identify each process as ex endothermic or exothermic and indicate the sign of delta H for this process. So an ice cube melting, does that involve heat going in or heat coming out? Going in. So that makes it endothermic, right? So this is... Which end to write endothermic with? Endothermic? can't just write an E because they both start with E. Is delta H going to be positive or negative? Positive. So it's going to be greater than zero. Energy coming in is positive. You put yourself in the situation of the system. Here, the system is the ice cube. How does it melt? Well, it absorbs energy. Nail polish remover quickly evaporating after it's accidentally spilled on the skin. So you spill some nail polish remover on your skin, it feels cold, right? Is that exothermic or endothermic? We're talking about the nail polish remover as the system. Endothermic. It is absorbing energy from your skin. Your skin is experiencing an exothermic process, but the nail polish remover evaporating is endothermic. So what's delta H? Positive. So delta H is positive, greater than zero. Gasoline burning within the cylinder of an automobile engine. Exothermic. Anything burning is a combustion reaction and I can't think of any combustion reactions that are not exothermic. And so anything burning, regardless of what it is, even some chemical that you don't know the name of, if it says burning or combusting, it's exothermic. Just like burning natural gas in the stove makes the stove hot, right? Burning a log, burning a match, we've all had experience feeling the heat from that. So here, delta H is negative, it's less than zero because the gasoline burning is giving energy to the surroundings. Any questions? Okay, let's zoom in on reactions and see what's going on on the molecular level. So the exothermic reaction is releasing thermal energy, causes the temperature of the surroundings to go up. Where does the thermal energy come from? Well, it comes from conversion of chemical potential energy. 
This is energy that's stored due to the positions of the particles, the electrons and the protons, etc. So that stored chemical potential energy in the reactants is converted into kinetic energy in the form of heat. So we have bonds in the reactants that are broken. New bonds are made, but those bonds are lower in energy. And so we find that the products have less chemical potential energy than the reactants did. The difference in the energy there is what's released as heat. So we went from reactants with a lot of energy to products with a low energy. The difference is the energy that's lost. Opposite thing is happening during an endothermic reaction. The temperature of the surroundings drops because the reaction is absorbing thermal energy. Again, we have existing bonds being broken, new bonds being formed, but the new bonds are higher in energy. The products now have more chemical potential energy than the reactants did. Where did they get the energy? It came from the surroundings. Thermal energy from the surroundings is absorbed and converted into chemical potential energy that gets stored in the products. I thought I had a picture. No picture, sorry. Any questions? Well, enthalpy of reaction, or delta H, is a measure of that heat that's transferred. Remember, this is heat being transferred at a constant pressure. So it's called the enthalpy of reaction or the heat of reaction. Heat of reaction is easier to, to remember because enthalpy is a weird word. Um, heat we know about, and heat and H are the same, you know, start with the same letter, so that's nice. Um, but then when we say heat of reaction, sometimes we get confused about the other heat, the small Q, and the, it all gets kind of fuzzy after a while. So the enthalpy change, delta H, this is an extensive property. The amount of heat transferred depends on the amounts of reactants, right? If you burn a toothpick or you burn a big log, there's going to be a difference in the amount of energy that's released, right? It just makes sense. So it's an extensive property. It depends on how much stuff you have. So we, could, we can write chemical equations. So this is uh, propane. Propane reacts with oxygen. This combustion reaction gives off carbon dioxide and water. And we can write delta H, the enthalpy of reaction. This is an exothermic process, so delta H is negative, and this is 2,044 kilojoules. Now, just by convention, just because we decided we're going to do it this way, this number refers to the specific molar amounts in the chemical equation. So it's this much energy being released for one mole of this that burns. Or if we're interested in how many moles of CO2 were produced, this much energy is released when three moles of CO2 are produced. It's just convention. Any questions about that? So ammonia reacts with oxygen according to this equation. We have our balanced chemical equation, and they're giving us delta H. Is this exothermic or endothermic? Exothermic. Negative delta H. It's releasing 906 kilojoules every time four moles of ammonia reacts with oxygen. So this says calculate the heat in, in kilojoules associated with the complete reaction of 155 grams of ammonia. So this is stoichiometry, but using heat. So the general path for stoichiometry was grams to moles to moles to grams. Right? Here we've got a mass of ammonia. So we're starting with grams, grams of ammonia, and then we're going to go to moles of ammonia. But what's nice about this, this relates directly to each of these terms. So we don't have to go from moles of ammonia to moles of something else. We can go from moles of ammonia directly to kilojoules. So we're not going to do that part or this part. 
we're going to go directly to kilojoules using this as our conversion factor. So I've got 155 grams of ammonia, and I'm trying to find out how much heat gets released. So how much heat doesn't say, oh, it does say kilojoules. How many kilojoules? So 155 grams of ammonia. And I'm going to convert that to moles of ammonia. Um, I happen to remember that 17.03, I think it's 034, is it 043? Dang. I think it's, I think I better, I better do the calculation then. Yeah, it is 34 grams. That's one mole of ammonia. And then I can go to kilojoules. Because delta H, this number is for each of these terms where the coefficient is the number of moles. So four moles of ammonia release this much energy. So it's four moles of ammonia because four is the coefficient in front of that chemical formula. And then up here I've got negative 906. So my units are working out 155 divided by 17.034 times negative 906 divided by 4 equals I should have three sig figs here, and the unit is kilojoules. So we should round that. Um, we're rounding in the tens place, and so it's best to put it in scientific notation. 2.06 times 10 to the third kilojoules. What about this negative sign? Do we need it? Yeah, we do. The, the question says, calculate the heat associated. It doesn't say the heat released. It doesn't say the heat absorbed. It doesn't give us a direction. So then we need to use the sign to indicate the direction in our answer. So this is the heat associated with that chemical reaction. The negative tells us it was released. Again, it, the energy is, is like money in some ways. If I say that you know I had this transaction with my neighbor, a financial transaction, um, that doesn't indicate whether I was paying him or he was paying me, right? If I say I paid my neighbor $50, then we don't need a sign on it. We're not going to say I gave him negative $50. But the transaction was minus $50. That tells us that I gave it to him and not the other way around. Any questions?